all the 9-11 whistleblowers, perhaps the most noteworthy are the 9-11 commissioners themselves. The 9-11 Commission, formerly the National Commission on Terrorist Attacks Upon the United States, was set up by President George W. Bush, who dragged his heels a full 441 days before finally establishing a body to investigate the events of September 11, 2001, and to prepare a full and complete account of the circumstances surrounding them. But that remarkable gap between the events and the impaneling of the commission was not due to mere laziness. Bush actively resisted any investigation for as long as he could, taking the extraordinary and unprecedented step of personally asking Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle to limit Congress's investigation into those events. It was only when the political pressure to form a commission of inquiry became too great for Bush to resist that he authorized the commission and nominated a chairman, Henry Kissinger. Today I'm pleased to announce my choice for commission chairman, Dr. Henry Kissinger. About once the commission begins its work, if fingers point to valuable allies, say Saudi Arabia, for example, um, the implications, the policy implications this could have to the United States, particularly at this delicate time. Uh, I have been given every assurance uh, by the president that we should uh, that we should go where the facts lead us. Kissinger's reputation as a cover-up artist and tool of the political establishment was such that even the New York Times speculated that Bush's nomination of him showed that the president wanted to contain the investigation into 9-11, not enable it. 9-11 victims' family members, similarly concerned that Kissinger was being appointed to run a cover-up commission, challenged him to his face to release the client list of his political consulting business. Several family members approached Kissinger and requested a meeting at his office in New York. Prior to the meeting, Kristen Breitweiser conducted a thorough investigation of Kissinger's potential conflicts of interest. Probably much to the chagrin of some of the people in the room, Lori asked some very pointed questions. Would you have any Saudi American clients that you would like to tell us about? and he was very uncomfortable, kind of twisting and turning on the couch. And then she asked whether he had any clients by the name of Bin Laden. And he just about fell off his couch. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger stepped down from the position Friday. We thought the meeting went well. The next morning, Kissinger resigned his post as head of the 9-11 Commission and former New Jersey Governor Thomas Kane and former Indiana Congressman Lee Hamilton were appointed chairman and vice chairman, respectively, to take his place. Remarkably, the suggestions of political cover-up did not end there, nor were they confined to a marginalized, lunatic fringe of conspiracy theorists derided by the establishment media. The remarkable and almost completely unreported fact is that six out of the ten commissioners Kane and Hamilton, as well as Bob Carey, Tim Romer, John Lehman, and Max Cleland, have all expressed concern that the commission was misled, stymied, hampered by conflicts of interest, and, ultimately, forced to participate in a politically motivated cover-up. In their book, Without Precedent, The Inside Story of the 9-11 Commission, and in press conferences and interviews at the time the report was released, Kane and Hamilton famously remarked, that the commission had been set up to fail. Even Lee Hamilton, the co-chair of the 9-11 Commission itself, admits to us that the process he headed up was seriously flawed. So there are all kinds of reasons. We thought we were set up to fail. We got started late. We had a very short time frame. Indeed, we had to get it extended. Uh, we did not have enough money. They were, they were afraid we were going to hang somebody. But it was very difficult, and Lee and I write in our book that um, we think the commission in many ways was set up to fail. As it turns out, the majority of the commissioners felt that the commission had been lied to, deliberately obstructed, undermined by the White House, or set up with staff that had conflicts of interest in the investigation. One of these concerned commissioners, Max Cleland, resigned because the commission had been deliberately compromised by the President of the United States. 
Commissioner John Lehman, meanwhile, admitted on NBC Nightly News that the commission had to go through Karl Rove and other senior White House members to access key documents in their investigation, and that we purposely put together a staff that had, in a way, conflicts of interest, stressing, lest there be any doubt, that all of the staff had, to a certain extent, some conflict of interest. Commission members even considered bringing criminal charges against Pentagon officials who had deliberately lied to them about the military's complete lack of response on that day. But perhaps the most cryptic of all the dissenting commissioners was Bob Carey. In 2009, he remarked that 9-11 was a 30-year-old conspiracy, but no mainstream reporter has ever followed up with him to clarify this statement. Do you support a criminal investigation into 9-11? Because I know yours was an exposition. It was, it was not a criminal investigation. I don't think so, but I, but I, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, do, I do support a permanent commission to examine. Not just that, but lots of other things in this area. So. But if it's a permanent cover-up, then it's, uh, it's... I mean, if it's an act of war and, it's, and it's, it's hiding things, which everyone on your commission knew that the Pentagon was changing their stories, lying to you, right. and it's a cover-up of an act of war, and under Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution, it's treason. So unless we get to the very bottom of it, then we're still talking tre- a treasonous exposition. This is a longer conversation. I'm not okay. sure you have, this will you ever get to the bottom of it. We have to. Or we can't ever. save our country, sir. I don't think, well, if that's the, if that's the condition upon which we're going to be saving our country, I don't Because the problem is it's a, it's a 30-year-old yeah, conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I'm talking about 9 11. That's what I'm oh, talking about. Oh, you are. You mean yeah. at this? Yeah. Right. yeah. Anyway, I got to get around. Okay, be well. Okay, thanks. All right. It is utterly remarkable that the 9-11 Commission and its final report are still held up as the final word on the events of September 11, 2001, when a majority of its own commissioners admit that the Commission was a cover-up and did not get to the bottom of the story. Even more remarkable is that this fact has never even been mentioned, let alone examined, in any mainstream media report. And despite the fact that the majority of Americans believe the government is concealing what it knows about the events of September 11th from the public, to this day, anyone who raises questions about the commission or its findings is treated as a conspiratorial loony by those same media personalities that refuse to report on the 9-11 commission's own whistleblowers. It should be apparent by this point that the old argument that someone would have talked is not just fallacious, but factually incorrect. There have, in fact, been numerous whistleblowers with documentable evidence of the frauds and fictions that have been constructed around the official 9-11 narrative. Their disclosures put the but someone would have talked doubters in an uncomfortable predicament. Either they are lazy, boldly pronouncing on issues they have not themselves bothered to investigate, or they are lying. What is especially galling when the so-called skeptics use the someone would have talked fallacy is that the whistleblowers have in fact done everything possible to publicize their stories, holding press conferences, filing formal appeals, joining whistleblower organizations, and making themselves available for interviews. For their heroic efforts, these brave men and women have been fired from their jobs, shunned by former colleagues, smeared by the mainstream media, and ignored by the public. Someone would have talked. Indeed, numerous someones have talked. Some of them have even screamed. But when their cries are ignored, the stories of the 9-11 whistleblower sound like the proverbial trees falling in the forest with no one around to hear them. Unless and until we give these valiant men and women a voice, then we will never hope to learn the truth about 
EPA did not give the people of New York complete information. The rest worked for the CIA or the National Security Agency. I'm just confused about one thing. Why World Trade Center 7 went down in the first place? 